So this is what we are going to cover. Uh, uh, we'll do a quick intro. This is uh, specifically for those who were not able to come to yesterday's analytics session. Yeah, it's, uh, and then we'll go into a few demo scenarios. Yeah, we'll try out a few things with uh, uh, the product. And uh, so we basically are going to use our new analytics product. It's an alpha version now. Uh, so yeah, so let's start off. OK. So, um, so what's streaming analytics? So this is the definition uh, by Forrester. So essentially, it's a software that provides uh, analytical operators to orchestrate data flow, calculate analytics, and detect patterns on event data from multiple disparate live data sources. Uh, and then this uh, basically allows developers to build applications uh, that would sense, think, and act in real time. So you basically are able to uh, ingest events from disparate systems uh, in real time, and uh, then basically uh, uh, process these events. So that's uh, doing some processing based on the rules that you have defined, and based on the results that you get, uh, be able to act in real time. So uh, WSO2 Analytics. So uh, the current GA product that we have in the analytics stack is the data analytics server. And as you can see, so uh, this includes the real time, the batch, and the machine learning capabilities. Uh, so we are moving uh, towards, uh, we have already moved towards the stream processor product. So that's the next gen product. And uh, it's a leaner version of um, the data analytics server. So the main areas that uh, are focused in the stream processor are the streaming complex event processing, streaming incremental time series aggregations, and streaming machine learning. So we have basically uh, pulled out the inbuilt uh, support that we had for batch analytics. Uh, this was because uh, of the work that we have done in incremental uh, analysis. So we believe that um, uh, almost uh, 80 to 90 percent of the batch analytics scenarios that were previously done can now be handled uh, in using the incremental uh, streaming uh, processing that we have. So we'll go uh, into that inner scenario. And uh, then machine learning. So initially, we allowed you to build machine learning models in the data analytics server itself. Uh, and also, we allowed you to upload uh, 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 already built model uh, and then basically use it in the processing uh, part. But so what we have seen is, um, yes, you most of you all basically who build models would have your own data sets and ways to build these models. So you probably will have a, a model already built. So that is supported. And uh, what we feel is more valuable is to have the streaming uh, machine learning option. So where you basically have a model, and then as the events go and you process, uh, you basically improve the model. So we also have a. Uh, we touch upon that in a demo scenario as well. So this basically is uh, the new product. So it doesn't mean that uh, you cannot do any batch analytics uh, if you really want, Spark-based. So basically, if you want, you can uh, link up to an external uh, Spark cluster and still basically uh, do your uh, batch analytics if needed. So um, so this is uh, a bit more of a uh, detailed diagram of what the stream processor has. So essentially, um, like I mentioned, so it has uh, the main three focus areas, the complex event processing, uh, the incremental time series aggregation, and machine learning parts. So this is uh, where the events uh, would basically, so the events would be ingested. Uh, in the stream processor core, which has these uh, capabilities. 
And then uh, we also have a lot of extensions. So we have extensions uh, in order to connect to different I.O. Uh, uh, stuff then uh, to different systems to do certain specific processing and so on. So we have a, a store as well. And uh, then we are able to monitor whatever that is being processed in, in the stream processor. And then on top of it, so you basically, so this is about the functional requirements. The non-functional requirements like uh, high availability is provided uh, through the analytics fabric. And in addition to just the product, the stream processor product, uh, what we basically are also doing, the analytics offering that we have at WSO2 includes a bunch of solutions uh, that we uh, have built based on certain use cases that we have seen. So we uh, are focused on uh, financial and banking analytics solutions, uh, retail analytics solutions, uh, then uh, uh, location analytics, operational analytics, uh, smart energy analytics, and so on. So the list would just go on based on the uh, learning and experiences that we build, because this is something that is going to evolve. And if you basically have some new use case, so then we would basically build that custom analytics solution uh, <coughs> using the stream processor and whatever other parts that are needed based on that use case. So. This is the total offering of, w, uh, of analytics from WSO2. Okay, so um, the users of uh, our analytics offerings, uh, the products or the solutions, uh, like we have a lot of uh, well-known names here. And uh, basically uh, we have like some of these uh, names are paid customers, whereas some of these names are cust uh, people who are using the product. So we, we are very um, proud of it because that means like uh, it is uh, in a product that can be used uh, without support as well. Uh, so yeah, so we are hoping to increase this list. Uh, so let's uh, get into the stream processor now. So like I said, uh, it's lightweight and lean uh, and uh, basically everything is uh, uh, written in streaming SQL, so you'll see that uh, in the demos. And then we have like a high performance um, with just two nodes. So basically if it's uh, 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 just two nodes, is uh, more than uh, sufficient to handle most of our use cases. And uh, we are also, uh, like I mentioned, we have native support for streaming machine learning. Uh, and long-term aggregations without batch analytics, the incremental processing, and um, uh, highly scalable deployment, uh, tools for development and monitoring, and then we also have the ability to extract out certain things uh, in order to allow business users to write their own rules. So uh, sometimes like it might be a bit uh, of a daunting task for bus business users to write what we are going to write at, uh, in the demo today, but we have another use, uh, demo use case where we will show you how you can template things out and uh, create it for business users to use. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> the stream processor comes with multiple profiles. Uh, so someone would start to uh, basically uh, develop, uh, write what you want to do using the editor or the studio profile. Uh, so that's where you would basically uh, write uh, everything that needs to go into that specific uh, analytics solution. And then you also, so that editor is uh, rich. We have basically uh, written it from scratch. And uh, it supports uh, things like debugging uh, and then testing out things. Uh, we also uh, have the ability to run uh, what you basically wrote on that same profile uh, from a dev perspective. And then once things are uh, basically tested and you're happy with it, so then you can actually deploy the artifacts into worker nodes. So the worker nodes are basically going to handle the actual processing. Uh, and then in addition to that, we have a dashboard profile. So this is where you would basically see the different portals of the product. So you basically 
have the business dashboard, the dashboards that you build um, using uh, the capabilities in the product. Then the business rules manager, so this is the, uh, the business users uh, portal where you basically can select already created uh, business tool templates and then basically build on top of that. And then a monitoring dashboard which gives you an idea of what's happening uh, in this uh, in the worker nodes. And finally, so uh, we will also talk a little bit about distributed processing where a single app is going to be deployed across multiple workers so that they can be uh, processed more efficiently. And when that mode is selected, then the manager profile would also come basically uh, to manage how to distribute uh, the task amongst these several worker nodes. So these are the different profiles uh, that, uh, are, uh, that will be used in the stream processor. Okay, so, um, so we are uh, basically uh, using a very simple use case. Uh, so basically this is a sweet factory management uh, uh, use case. So uh, we have a factory which is going to basically uh, create suites and uh, this would uh, get raw materials uh, and then once the suites are manufactured, uh, basically it would be delivered to a uh, store or multiple stores. So this is uh, what the different demo use cases would be around. Uh, so uh, basically it's about monitoring uh, the supply, production and sales, uh, then optimizing the resource utilization. Uh, basically alerting when needed and uh, predictions of the demand. Uh, so uh, then you would also be able to see uh, how the business rules will work and then visualizing uh, certain aspects of uh, things that we are going to demo. Okay, so, um, so let's uh, set the stage with the basics. So first of all, um, so in order to like consider an end-to-end -end use case, so there are three main parts. So you need to be able to receive events, analyze and report. So uh, in receiving, you would basically define a stream, then figure out the source, what are the mappings, uh, and then you would basically do the analysis, and then finally, uh, again, pick out a stream and a sync. So we call the uh, receiving part as a source and uh, the publishing part as a sync uh, and then basically uh, send out the results using uh, those two constructs. So, um, so if you uh, look at this picture, so if you uh, have any uh, previous experience with uh, the data analytics server, so uh, when you when you started out to like create a solution, uh, you would have had to basically create a stream, uh, uh, basically define the schema, then pick a, a receiver, an input receiver, and then you would have uh, basically written all your rules inside an execution plan, for example, and then uh, selected, okay, this is my output stream definition, and uh, this is the publisher that I'm going to use. So what we have done here is so um, there were lots of different parts and you had to remember that you needed to create those and link them to each other. So for us, uh, we felt that in order to improve the usability, uh, basically we need to have one place to define all of this. And that's what the Siddhi app is going to be. So inside a Siddhi app, so it's, it's similar to the execution plan, so you open up uh, 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 the place where you start defining things and you basically define everything, the, the stream of how you are going to receive events, uh, then the sources, then whatever uh, the queries that you would be using in order to do the processing and finally the streams and the uh, syncs that you would send out the results to. So all of this is going to be in one single place. Okay, so these are the things that obviously you would see, so I won't, I won't just uh, uh, main, uh, list these. So you'll basically see uh, 
uh, while we are doing the demo about how uh, the different uh, aspects of the editor are. And uh, so the dev environment in the editor profile, so you basically, you, once you write that Siddhi app, you have the ability to test it. You can either, uh, so we have a simulator where you can basically send events one by one or else you can basically do a feed where we pick okay, uh, a set of random data and you say you need to send, uh, you have to have this feed active for a certain time period or a certain number of events and then basically that would uh, simulate events so that you can test out uh, your scenarios. Or else you can also have uh, data of a CSV file or a database uh, in order to uh, do this testing. And yeah, so um, uh, so yeah, so this is just a, a, a preview of what you have. So you basically have all of this uh, together in uh, one uh, basically place. Okay, um, so let's start off. So so we start off by creating a Siddhi application, the Siddhi app. So uh, when you create a new uh, so I need to now uh, switch into the stream, uh, different, okay. So, uh, so this is uh, the downloaded alpha pack uh, that I have here and I go into the bin directory and you would see the different uh, profiles. So what I'm going to start is the editor profile now. And uh, I can't see it. Okay, is it? So this is the uh, URL of the uh, link, so... Okay, so this is the view of the uh, editor. Uh, so you can see you have the same console over here, uh, which you uh, saw here. And uh, you, so we have a few samples that you can try out later. Uh, and. So this is how you would basically start uh, creating a CD app. So you uh, would either go new if you are creating something brand new, or else you can open what has been already defined. So I'll um, I'll create a new uh, CD app. So like you see, we have the annotation which indicates okay, this is a uh, so this is the start of the app and this is the name. So it says CD app. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll basically change this to uh, okay, and um, and then I would basically save it to uh, my workspace. So this is uh, so this basically now says okay. So there's nothing here. So you get the. Uh, uh, real-time errors and these are the basically things that I have already uh, created so you uh, as you can see uh, the different uh, uh, applications that I have already created can be seen so if I want to open one of these uh, basically I would just double click and then yes you can see that and the location of where this is saved uh, can be seen so in case you want to like see where it is uh, stored in. Okay, so let's go back to the um, presentation. So first of all, you need to basically name that seed the application. And uh, okay, and next, so you will be receiving uh, input uh, stream. 
uh, you so you basically need to do the definition of that so we are going to uh, look at uh, two areas during this entire demo about receiving raw materials to the factory and then uh, producing sweets in the factory so essentially there will be two main streams that we use the raw material stream uh, and so you basically can say define stream and then the name and then this is basically your schema definition mapping it to what was already there and similarly you basically can uh, define the sweet production stream okay so uh, so if I go to the uh, app that I created. So now I can basically uh, yeah, select stream. And you would see now there's a template that has been created. So I'm going to uh, uh, name this. And then the attribute was name. So the type is okay, st string. And then the second uh, attribute was amount, and the type was double. OK. So you have defined uh, your uh, first uh, uh, stream. And similarly, so uh, let me define, um, uh, no, I'll just let this be. And um, OK, so then. Uh, so next, now we need to link this stream uh, to something that is going to push events into this. So this is basically saying that there'll be an HTTP source which would be pushing events into the raw material stream, uh, events of these types, and the format would be of JSON. So that's what uh, this means. So uh, if I go back uh, to... Uh, So you basically uh, get uh, that uh, annotation and source, yeah. source, and then you basically uh, have GTP and uh, at map. And then uh, I'm just going to say, because JSON. Okay. So uh, this basically says that um, uh, now the source has been defined. And uh, if I want to see, so if I want to see what is going to basically uh, 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 come into this, so. Uh, then uh, basically I can define, so like a source, I can define uh, uh, a sync that will basically be a log. So before that, now uh, I have said that, okay, so this stream is going to be um, uh, event, uh, event stream which is expecting events that are of name and amount uh, that have these two fields. So this means, uh, now I haven't, uh, uh, so this means it's going to use the default mapping. So the event that will be sent to this stream will be of uh, this type. And uh, the default mapping is used, so there's no pre-mapping uh, done uh, before we do any processing. So um, if I uh, go back, sorry. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add a log so that we can see what is happening and don't need level. okay okay so now uh, basically what is going to come into the raw material stream we are going to log and show so we now need to run this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, start running this uh, see the app 
And you can see that uh, basically there is a listener which was created for the raw material stream. So this is uh, the URL for that. So I can uh, basically uh, get that URL. And I will first show on uh, using a REST client. Uh, so, okay. And basically, uh, this is the this is the event uh, that is expected. So it's the name, string, and an amount double, which will go in. And uh, I basically will uh, send one. And you would can see that uh, that particular event was received and it was logged. So uh, that's basically uh, receiving an event. So if we go back uh, to this, okay. So uh, so we started off saying that we wanted uh, two streams. So um, the next uh, uh, stream is the sweet production stream. So uh, again, the definition was uh, name and amount. Uh, but in this case, the the source is actually not going to send uh, this default type of stream and uh, in this format. But it's so it will basically send something like this. Uh, it uh, the sending uh, system would basically send an event which has uh, this type of format, and we need to convert it to what. Uh, we are expecting. So that's basically the mapping uh, part that we have uh, shown here, uh, just above uh, the definition of the string. So if I go uh, back to the editor, and I'll simply switch to the existing app that I created so that uh, you don't have to watch uh, me typing. Uh, so essentially, so this is basically where I'd say, okay, again, it's an HTTP source. Uh, the format is JSON, but uh, there is a mapping. So the event that comes here will basically uh, uh, be of this type. So now I will, uh, yeah. So I now need to. And we have the sweet production stream up and running. Okay. And so if I send this same thing, it will basically give an error. So just show that. And So, so it's, it says, okay, these are the missing attributes. So it's dropping the message because it was expecting something different. So I'll go back to the uh, REST client and basically fix this. So this is the format that it's expecting, item and ID. Uh, and then I send it. And now, yes, so now we are sending uh, uh, the event properly, and it's also been logged. So that's basically uh, the setting the stage of for this entire uh, tutorial. So, right. So let's get back to uh, this. Okay. So, um, so the first use case that we are going to try out is uh, production. Uh, so we want to detect. Uh, uh, we want to be aware that production at each factory should not uh, at at the factory should not go below 5000 units per hour so that's what we want to detect so first of all what we need to do is we need to monitor and filter out events that indicate low production okay. so the first thing is so we basically now we are talking about sweet production so we use the sweet production stream and uh, then basically we basically uh, uh, receive events into the sweet production stream. And we have a query. So from the sweet production stream, 
we are going to first calculate just the total of everything that comes in. So that this is basically select uh, sum of amount from the name amount uh, fields as hourly total and insert it insert into low production alert stream. So we, we basically uh, do a filter and push that into another uh, intermediate stream. Uh, now this is not going to, uh, uh, this is simply first doing a filter uh, and uh, aggregation of what is coming in. And then basically, uh, so we, we are going to uh, limit this aggregation to windows of one hour. So that's basically where we say, okay, I pick a window where I set the time to one hour and basically calculate the total amount uh, that comes in uh, during the last one hour and then push it into uh, this stream. So now we will be getting different suites. So what we are going to do is we are going to group this by the different suite types and uh, push it into uh, and basically do the same aggregation and uh, push it into the stream for each uh, of the products. And uh, so now we are getting there. So now we need to filter like uh, what are the uh, products basically that have been uh, created less than this threshold that we have set, so 5,000. And uh, now we actually have filtered out the low production uh, suites. <coughs> Now, uh, in next, what would happen is, so um, we need to basically uh, capture uh, the, uh, the correct information. So maybe at off-peak times, the production will anyway be low. So we want to uh, basically get this uh, query right by also filtering uh, uh, basically uh, restricting it to a certain amount of uh, certain period of time. So in order to do that, we are going to use an extension here where we extract uh, the hour of the current, uh, the events time. And that is also incorporated into the query so that uh, in addition to this hourly total being less than 5,000, the threshold, we also uh, check the condition that it is during peak. So it's greater than nine and less than 15. From nine to 15, uh, from nine to five is the peak period where production should not go uh, below the threshold. And so now this basically would uh, uh, create events as soon as uh, it goes uh, beyond uh, uh, the amount is less than 5,000 within that uh, period. So this is our extension store where all of the analytics extensions, all of WSO2 extensions are here. And then if you pick analytics, you can see the analytics functions that are, uh, that can be reused. Uh, so now we want to also manage the sending of alerts. So what we are going to do is we are going to uh, basically pick, okay, Let's limit this to every 15 minutes so that we don't like spam the alerting um, uh, the person who's going to be alerted. So every 15 minutes we do this check and then we send out that uh, alert. So this is basically how uh, that's done. And uh, yeah, so uh, once you do this, uh, then, uh, so I think I can go back. To, uh, yeah, so I'll just continue. So, so once you do this, now we need to, so the next step is we need to send an alert to um, the manager via email. So uh, that means now this low alert, uh, low production alert stream, uh, which we used to push things into, needs to be uh, directed to an email alert. So that's the sync type that we're using. So basically we say uh, the sync type here is email. Uh, this is the email address that we are going to send the alert to. And this is basically a template of what the email uh, will have. So the subject would be low production of, and this is the name of the suite 
uh, that will that would have been filtered out. So we can basically get uh, these values of uh, the current context that is there, and then uh, the body of the uh, basically the email would say, okay, uh, your production of uh, this particular suite has gone down to the hourly total. So that total that we uh, calculated in uh, the last hour and basically send this out. So, um, so I have this uh, created here in uh, this uh, Siddhi app. So basically, uh, uh, we have the sweet production stream. And uh, then uh, basically, uh, the so uh, but when you're writing Siddhi apps, you need to remember like all the definitions should first come at the top. And then uh, basically, we start having, so that's like a comment. And we start having the uh, queries here. So uh, this basically is that uh, query that I explained. So you basically uh, do the window. So I'm going to do it for much less uh, period of time, so 10 seconds. And then we're going to still check it for 5,000. and. Uh, output, so we are going to rate limit by five seconds. So because this is a shorter time period, the demo time period. And we are going to insert into this stream. And then that stream would basically uh, send out an email. So now how am I going to test this? Um, I'm basically going to uh, use the simulator. So I have uh, defined a uh, feed simulation that would basically uh, uh, so I'll just open it up and show. So I have named it, and then uh, this simulation is going to run for uh, 1,000 milliseconds. Uh, so what I'm, uh, I basically can pick uh, what stream I'm going to, what application I'm going to uh, use, and which stream I'm going to push events to, uh, to the feed. And then uh, basically uh, say, OK, uh, so this is, these are the values uh, that are going to be used. So the random values is what we have selected. And uh, the data, so the string data, we can basically say this, uh, just randomly select any one of these uh, for each of the events that will go in. And the amount basically will basically be a uh, random value which is uh, used. We can say from, uh, we can set a range uh, and uh, set the number of decimals and so on, so that your events, you can basically configure this to match that uh, use case that you have in mind. Okay, so I'll, um, and now what I do is I'll uh, start running this. So. Uh, Run this right. <coughs> Started. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. <coughs> okay. We have a. Small conflict, yes. So, okay. Um, so you see. One is what we were doing. The console can be seen. It's the simulator, feed simulation. And uh, basically, we need to run this and then say start simulating. Okay. So now you can see the events are uh, 
these are the different events so different types of uh, sweets are being produced and we are getting these uh, events so the simulation is over now and uh, so the results should go to um, my mail account okay so this is just a sample so for caramel bars uh, it says, uh, let me open it up, open the top one. That so it says, uh, this is the template that we wrote, so it says, hi manager, and so this was a templated value, the name, and this was also a templated value, the amount, in the last hour. So basically we can, we would generate that, uh, the emails. Okay, so... <laughs> Right, so that's basically about uh, uh, the first use case. And then uh, let's get on to the second use case. I think we are running out of time. So, um, okay. So I'll quickly run through this and just show the end result like I did now. So the second use case is about uh, monitoring the raw material uh, uh, storage at the factories, the raw material that comes in. So first of all, we need to basically uh, store the raw ma material shipment uh, details in a data store. So with uh, the stream processor, basically we can uh, store events that are uh, we can uh, basically link up with data stores, either to store the events, to retrieve events, and uh, even to modify. So if you are storing it, we can simply use it as a, uh, as a sink to store, or else we can join an existing uh, data store with an incoming stream and then do any uh, retrieval and modification as required. So um, we, uh, then we, when you are defining these uh, stores, you can also basically mention what the primary and indexing keys are so that that would make things more efficient. So um, so again, the raw material stream is there, and this is how uh, the it would receive events over HTTP. And we are now defining a table. So this is the data store, the latest shipment detail table, which basically would contain these two, uh, uh, which, would, which would have records of these two uh, types. So now we haven't mentioned anything here, so this goes as an in-memory table. So the stores that we use with the stream processor can either be in-memory if you want uh, something to be there for a short term, uh, short period of time, or else, uh, and you can specify the primary key uh, and the index so that uh, it will enable fast data access. Or else, uh, you can also specify that store to be a uh, permanent data store. So you can pick the type of uh, data store and then basically specify this. So uh, so once you define uh, the the data table that would the event table that would be the store, uh, then you need to insert this data into the table. So again, what we do is, so the stream will basically uh, receive all the events, and then using this query, so basically you, from raw material stream, whatever that comes in is inserted into the latest shipment detail table. So when we do this, if I am getting sugar, for example, so sugar for uh, 10, uh, 10 pounds, and then uh, sugar for, let's say, 50 pounds. So I will get all of that. So that's not the actual latest shipment detail table. It would be everything that I receive. So what I then need to do is basically uh, uh, match the incoming name uh, to what is there, and then basically uh, either insert or update what is, if it is already there, so that you get the latest uh, shipment details in that table. So uh, this basically is first uh, inserting the data uh, of the raw material uh, deliveries that we get. So next what we need to do is calculate hourly uh, 
uh, to yearly raw material storage by each type. So we are going to monitor what is happening. So in order to do this, we are going to use our uh, incremental processing, where we aggregate over longer time periods. So this basically uh, uh, has the capability, uh, so you can say that the incremental aggregation can happen either for a second, a minute, an hour, up to a year. So it will first aggregate the values and push it into the different uh, second buckets. And then it would basically uh, aggregate the values and uh, push it into the minute buckets and so on. And uh, so then uh, this would basically uh, help us to do uh, fast data retrieval whenever we need to get the values of this. So this is basically uh, what uh, we are going to use in uh, this uh, example. So this is how we uh, basically define it. So the aggregation is the raw material aggregation. So from this stream, where we select the name and then we sum the amount as a total amount, we average it as average amount and we group it against the name of the raw material type and we aggregate from minute to year. So basically, we are uh, calculating the total uh, uh, for these uh, different uh, time periods. And again, we can basically store this in a permanent uh, data store. Right. So, um, so this basically is the CIDDI app. Uh, with uh, those queries uh, that I uh, mentioned. So we are using MySQL here and uh, uh, as the data store. And we have the latest shipment detail table, which basically will have the latest value only. And then we also have the uh, incremental uh, processed data uh, uh, as well. So um, what now what we are going to do is, so like the previous uh, example, I have a, a simulation which I uh, basically can run. So this is uh, going to just generate uh, the different uh, events that would basically uh, be uh, created. So I will stop this for a moment. And uh, so the next, uh, the last part of this use case is basically visualizing the summary results in a dashboard. So we have a dashboard portal, uh, basically through which you can generate dashboards. Uh, and then you can, so we have a bunch of widgets that you can drag and drop into the dashboard position and all. And uh, basically provide fine grain permissions and so on, uh, localization. And if you want fine grain drilling into widget communication and so on. So uh, what we, uh, this is just a view, so we can show something real, I think. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll basically uh, go to the dashboard profile. So now I'm going to start up the dashboard profile. So the dashboard profile, uh, basically, uh, if you remember in the previous slide, we, it has different portals. So it has the dashboard, the business pro portal, it has the business rules, and it has the monitoring portal. So what I'm going to uh, now going to use is uh, this. So I'll open up. Uh, So this basically is the uh, raw materials dashboard that uh, we created. So what I have, uh, uh, sorry, okay. Okay, let's go back to. Okay, so that's not showing. So let's do. Uh,
and I'll just edit. Okay, so now I'm in design view. So these are the different widgets uh, that we basically see. Uh, so uh, the different ingredients uh, that are uh, being used, the raw materials. So if I, uh, so I can just drag it and drop. So these are the different uh, types of ingredients and uh, this is basically the pie chart of how much is actually accumulated right now. Uh, so this data is off that uh, aggregated table and then uh, let me also get the similar view in line chart. Okay, so we have um, uh, the same view here. So I'll save this. Okay, one of them is going to off. Let's see what happens. Uh, okay, so now we have this uh, as static. So what I'll do is I'll go back here. Uh, I'll go back here and I'll start the simulator. Uh, this. And essentially, yeah, so you basically would start uh, seeing uh, the uh, data being accumulated. So, yeah, so this is basically a very basic view of uh, the dashboard and we are like, we will be working more on this area uh, for the beta and the uh, GA releases. Okay, right. Um, so that basically brings you to the end of uh, use case two. So next, uh, there are three or four more use cases where Suho will basically uh, carry on with this uh, session. Um, so you, um, we were able to see the basic steps of what we were able to do with the different type of dashboards and so on. So uh, I will just go to the editor uh, to show some capabilities uh, that the stream processor has uh, so that you will be able to leverage them uh, when you are developer as a developer. So um, in this, um, uh, in this, the the key functionality that we have added to this release is the simulation capability. So you can send an event by event simulation. So you can pick one of that. Uh, so it will create. You can pick one application, and then we can pick a particular stream, and then we can fill out the information here. You can even sell null values and then you can start the server and send it through this one. Uh, so you can also have multiple of those created and test it at the meantime. And also the feed simulation capability, so where uh, you can click create, uh, and then this basically brings you to a page that uh, helps you to build the simulation part, how often you want to send, them, send the simulation, and uh, also if you want, if you have a historic data, then we can say, I only want, from the database, I only want uh, data from um, yesterday morning at 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, or only on those period. I want to send a particular period, so you can pick that period here. So if you are simulating from the database, it will only read through that particular area. And how many number of events you want to send, so these are advanced configuration, which you, might, you can miss it. And apart from that, we have random CSV and database Stuff. So we can have a CSV uploaded or we have a database. If you have already have a database, we can read from that and use it. So when it comes to random, so it's also the same stuff. So you can pick an application, a stream, uh, and then uh, we have multiple ways of sending messages. So it can be a static value. 
So it can be just one stuff, or you can can be comma separated values, uh, which which it will pick. So if it is a comma separated value, then it will it will identify each of them and uh, it will send in a, in a random order. Uh, and if it is uh, primitive based, uh, you can say, okay, I want a string length five. It will just send it that. And you can also say it has to be property based. So the property is something like uh, if it is a day email address, so it creates a random email address and send it so that you can do more uh, useful tests. So, uh, so some customers were asking for these kind of features. So you can say a country or company or something like that. So we are generating this to a library. And it, you can also create it as a regu regular expression. So you can give a regular expression, so it will create the string for that particular regular expression. So this is uh, possible for both uh, string, uh, strings and all, all, all type of uh, values. Uh, uh, so it, you, know, you can just say height in here or some numbers uh, for each of them. Um, so this is for, for doing random values. Uh, and then you can also add the CSV value. So in this particular case, uh, you can select the app and the stream that you want to simulate. And then you can pick a CSV that is already uploaded, or you can upload one and see like, what is the delimiter of that. Uh, oops. And uh, uh, the event recording time, uh, so they, and, and certain, like whether it, has a, it is ordered or it is non-ordered. We have to order it and send it, so all of those minute functionalities are also there, like first column, which, which column values belongs to which field. So all of those can be configured when you simulate. So the same, same functionality is also available in the server. Like for example, if you want to do playback scenarios, so uh, when you are testing, so sometimes when you write a rule, some interesting occurrences might be missed. So you want to improve your rules by playing back the historic data so that the new rules can work. So you might sometimes even want to play back in the production environment. So the same uh, simulation capability is there in the worker node as well, but you have to enable them through the API. So you don't have a UI for that, but if you, uh, if you can enable them through the APIs to run it and simulate that. Okay, so uh, that's a kind of recap of different type of simulation capabilities that you have, uh, we have. And, uh, uh, full screen. So we have already covered these sections. <coughs> Oops. Okay. So um, if we want to identify uh, an alert about the future production uh, levels, so that's, that's almost about predicting. So before going into prediction, we should be able to uh, use, uh, identify what is the current rate, like we should understand um, the current input rate and whether it, it is um, coping up with the production rate. So here is a, this is a sample uh, that basically demonstrate how we can correlate two, str two streams. So we have a raw material stream uh, and the production input stream. So this is, this is the consumption of the production. So the well, goods will come in the raw material stream, and in the production input stream, we'll consume that for actual production. So within, uh, so we have those two streams, and we can join them. And on those two streams, we consider only the last one hour values, and we join based on the items. Like for example, if you are, uh, if uh, if a sugar is delivered, and our, when we are consume the sugar, uh, we, we we basically we are trying to join those two real-time streams together. And then we are basically trying to calculate the sum of both. Like, OK, within the last one hour, how much sugar has been delivered and how much sugar has been consumed. So those are the two things that we are uh, calculating. And we calculate that for each of the input raw material, whether it's sugar or caramel or whatever that's thing that we need for uh, the production. And then we can improve the having conditions such that we can calculate a 5% a uh, five percent difference between those two. So, like the consumption is high, high five percent higher than the raw, raw material input. Then it we have to inform them to deliver stuff much faster. So we can basically uh, uh, alert and or, or we can invoke another system to inform this particular use case. So, 
So now you, 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 you see that we are defining a window. So if we, when we define a window, the events are going to be accumulated in that window for the last one hour. So we are creating something in memory. And we can't have very large windows, like for one day or stuff. And if the rate is very high, then the system won't be able to cope up. So, but sometimes we might need to use like one hour window in multiple places. Like you want to do aggregation on that particular window, not just with this join, for several other reasons. So on those cases, we can define a win. We can also like defining a stream. We can define a window of time one hour globally, and then we can use that window in multiple places. So that is also possible. Like we can externalize the window concept like the table, and then we can use it in multiple places for to achieve uh, efficiency in uh, real time processing. So that's um, that's another feature that we can do. So uh, you will be so you can basically see that uh, th this one implemented. Um, okay. uh, through through this particular scenario, so we have um, uh, the raw material information uh, here, and uh, what I'll try to basically uh, do is I'll try to simulate this data. Um, and before simulating, I'll also try to show you the debugging capability of the product. So, uh, so that we can see how uh, how how they behave. So I can you can add a debug for each of the uh, stream uh, for when the in, for the input and output. You will be able to add debug points, and then we will be able to send events to them and uh, and simulate. So it's for one. Uh, for the input is going to be production input stream, yeah. And I will just say, uh, it's just something, some double value. So I, I'm, I'm going to start this in the debug mode. I start that. Uh, and then I'll basically send this. Already started. I'll get this copy. Was older running. Uh, so this sometimes happens uh, because of uh, the front end and back end communication. So uh, in the back end state, is the app is running and front end doesn't know that the back end is running. So the UI is not responding properly. So there are some small glitches like that. So we are hoping to uh, fix that uh, as ASAP. Okay, so uh, the debug uh, console is there. Uh, so we should be able to send some simulation. So um, here you will be able to see like, okay, um, we are consuming an event, so you can see the state of event, like the, the internals of that event. So we have optimized the event for different type of capabilities, like to have actual data, um, or no after window, or different type of uh, ways of uh, having data. So we have text 1023 here. Uh, and so this is an input uh, event that is coming into this particular query. And then we can also say the state of the query, like okay, we have this particular query, uh, and that uh, query has uh, multiple subsections, so there is no data inside this particular query because it's the first event that is coming in, so you can't see any of those stuff. But if there are any query 
uh, input in those things, then you will be able to basically see see them in the queue as well, like whether these these windows are consuming them. So if I say uh, continue with this, and if I send another one, uh, so maybe we should be able to see some events in this queue. Uh, not these ones, maybe. I don't know. So this is a 15 second queue, so I, I'm, I might be missing them. So, uh, so, these, so we, we will be able to see the internal state and also uh, the events that is coming in. So in, if you have a logic that you don't understand, if it is not working properly, then basically you can debug through this and identify them as well. And apart from this, for all the extensions, we have the documentation automatically appearing. So that will help you to create your own, like when you, for example, if it is a time window, you don't know what properties it can consume and uh, if you what's the return type of it, and all of those can be explained through that. Like for example, log. Uh, so it, you can also give uh, the priority as, as something. You can give additional prefix uh, and so on and so forth. So all of those information are also available. And for each of the streams, you can look at their definitions and auto completion capabilities are also there. Okay. Um, so that's a brief of uh, what capabilities does it have. Uh, so I'll stop this and I'll just do a normal feed simulation. I'll do a normal run and a feed simulation. So uh, I have configured this feed simulation such that uh, uh, it sends equal amount for the input and output. So uh, on, the, on, on the console you might not see any uh, errors. So if I, when I send the manual uh, intervention to this, like we have a raw material stream, and I would say uh, something like, uh, so caramel is the one is, which is published. So I'll just say that and give some abnormal value here. Uh, and I can also have another one ready to uh, publish the other way around. So it's uh, which one I was using. I was using raw material one, so I can use the production input stream uh, for caramel, and I can say, Something. So uh, if I send the first one, so uh, it's raw material. So if, if there's more raw material, there's not a problem. It's not a problem at all. So it works as expected. But on the other case, if you have a very large amount of uh, um, re incoming request, then you can see this alert getting printed. So that means there's an output being printed on 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 those side. Uh, so, um, so if to to counter out that, so when we increase uh, the raw material amount, that alert will eventually go away because we have uh, we have we have correlating the events in real time. So this basically gives you a, a hint of how how this thing works. So how the real time uh, correlation is happening between two of those streams. Uh, so we'll go to the next section. Uh, we are uh, we want to now do the prediction part. So we did the past. Um, on real time, we were correlating events, but at the same time, we might also need to do in, in uh, do, do predictions. So, if you want to do prediction, uh, and if you are familiar with Python, R, or any other things, uh, machine learning libraries, they support exporting your libraries as PMML. And we are also uh, writing a feature that basically let you run any TensorFlow model. So, if you have a TensorFlow library, and if you have implemented on that, then you can run that in real time here as well. So we are doing providing that support, and apart from that, um, we also do this streaming machine learning. So we are uh, doing uh, intense intense research on uh, the available streaming machine learning libraries uh, and the algorithms, and we have implemented few algor algorithms. We are using some. Uh, if, if it is already good, we are, all, we are using, importing those libraries and using it. So we have uh, capabilities for clustering, classification, regression, and all of those stuff. We also have our own support for Marco models and anomaly detection capabilities that are already there, and it, it's, it's in the process of Im improvement. So if you already have a model, a static model, then we can basically define, uh, 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 def use that model in the, in the PMML and basically use that. So uh, I'll just show you an example of how this is done. So, uh, so uh, we have already uh, a sweet production stream uh, uh, one. So why why did I do this? It says.
So okay, that particular stuff is not there in the uh, file. Okay. Um, so um, this file is now available, so it should start. Uh, let's save this. Okay, and then I run it. Okay, it has started successfully. Uh, so. So we have already built a model uh, for a sweet production uh, rate. So it, it will predict uh, in one hour or in the next hour how much production we can expect. So we have uh, the current uh, hour amount and the previous hour amount. So this is what we originally have. And from this, we have already built a model to identify the next hour in input. So that is what we are trying to predict, predict here. So when you use a single event simulation for this, so if we have to send it to the production, and we can say, uh, what is this? So we can say it's candy. So these are the things that has been trained. And the current hour is 30, and the previous one is um, you know, 35 for some reason. Uh, so when we send, it will give you the predicted result. So you can see it says 50 some, some value. And you send that same uh, value again and again, it's going to give you the same results because it is a static stuff and it doesn't change. But at the meantime, uh, we can also have um, a streaming machine learning. So where we try to learn as, as when we have uh, different type of models uh, in the system. So if we are, if we are learning on the fly, so for that particular example, I'll, I'll try to show this one. So we have the same example here. So we have the current tower and the previous tower, and we are trying to predict the next tower scenario. And we are using a streaming machine learning. So we are uh, you, using uh, uh, an algorithm, uh, the regression algorithm, algorithm that basically make that happen. So so what we are trying to do is we are trying to get a result stream, and then we are trying to train, uh, like for example, after one hour, we can get the next hour information as well, right? So we can basically get that, and we are training the model, and at the same time, we are also doing a prediction. So we are doing a prediction, and then we are doing a training, like both at the same time. So for example, in this particular scenario, if I send the event in, in the beginning, I might only get so production input stream, uh, if, I, if I just say uh, 38 and 25, and if I just start that uh, and run it. So it's going to give zero in the beginning because it has no input. It doesn't know, like, it, we have not trained that particular stuff. And at the same time, I'm going to send a feed that basically uh, does training for this particular scenario. So. Now, we, this is a CSV file simulation, so it is basically sending some feed to do that simulation. And if I send the values, and you can see uh, this value is changing, like it is changing from six, uh, 56 to 54, and so on and so forth, because on real time, it is now been trained, so the predict predicted values are also uh, eventually adjusting to the correct uh, values. So this is something. Uh, this is uh, an example of streaming machine learning that you can do. So with the static model, we can also use the streaming alongside with that so we can get uh, more accurate results. It's not just using streaming. You can do both at the same time as well. Uh, so that's what we do with the streaming stuff. And then if there is insufficient capacity, like, uh, like doing a join with the window, we c uh, as explained earlier, we can basically send an alert uh, out. So here we have a predicted uh, prod input, uh, input stream and the raw material window. And if the raw material is less than the amount required, then we can basically send an alert. So this is a simple example of that. So this is another use case where the factory manager should be alerted if the production does not start within 15 minutes from the raw material arrival. So if a raw material arrive at the system, uh, factory, we have to immediately take that and use it for the production. And if we are not using it, it should be informed so that they can look in why it's not happening. So for that, uh, as I explained on the talk, 
uh, this is the query, the exact query that we are going to use. So for every uh, raw material stream, so every event in the raw material stream, and if there is no uh, production input, if there is no event from the production input stream, saying uh, a, a correlating event from the production input stream, within 15 minutes, then it might be an issue. So if there is a not this for 15 minutes, then it has to be an alert. So I have also created uh, this particular scenario pre-built. So, so you can see uh, for every raw material stream, uh, uh, and if that is followed by a not a uh, production input stream, uh, here I'm just saying for 10 seconds, uh, and it's going to send an alert. So we'll create two simulations, a single event simulation, so that we can uh, we can test this out. So five, and it, we are going to go to raw material stream. Uh, so the name is going to be, I'll just use caramel, just to be consistent. And the amount is, we are sending 40. So we will be sending this first. And then following, following that, I can send another event of the same type uh, for the production input stream. Uh, the amount is 40. So first, I'll use the first scenario. I'll start it. OK, and I send this. So I have sent uh, an input. And within 10 seconds, uh, uh, after 10 seconds, I should be able to see an output because I have not uh, published another event. So you can see, uh, after some times, this event appearing, saying that uh, uh, they, it has not happened. But at the meantime, if I send another event from this, and immediately if I send uh, a following event from this, then you, sh you, will be in, you will not be able to see any updating events coming here, because that state machine implementation will internally identify this particular pattern, and it will not alert. But we, when we want to have, we, if we can also have cases where you want to actually alert the other way around. So if you just remove this, and we can even remove the time period, so if I deploy this, uh, then if the, now it is, it's a not case, it's, like it, it's the other way around. So I can start this. I can send one event. And when I, sorry, I have to send the raw material first. So I'm sending the raw material first. And then if I send the other event, then now we are getting an event. Because now we have removed the not out of this. So it is, it is behaving the other way. So this is how you can use uh, a pattern uh, in, in, in complex event processing or in um, a stream processor uh, to do these kind of manipulations. So this is a very a powerful feature. Like if you try to implement such a feature in uh, your own language, like Java or Python or anything, it will be very expensive. And you can't change these kind of um, uh, ch um, change these fast as well. So that is another use case. OK, uh, the next one is from the manager's perspective, they want to do modification for everything. So they, uh, the threshold values should be managed by the manager. So first, uh, the, the use case is the alert the factory manager if the rate of production continuously decreases for x time period. So we have a time period, and that we don't know. It, it, it depends on the manager's will. So in this particular case, uh, we have to identify continuously decreasing trends. So for that, we have to have a query. So that's this particular query. So we are using a time batch window. So for every second, it creates the sum of event of a particular time to this last minute product stream. So we have only 10 minutes, so I'm not going to go into the details of this. And then uh, we are going to have a partition, so where we can partition this uh, and identify a pattern. So this is something similar like I explained earlier. But here we are using commas inter, in, instead of arrows. That means like these are immediate next events. And then you can say one event of this and many event of this, um, zero or more event of E2, and there is one event of E3. So if this happened in this particular order, I need an alert. So that basically produced that information. So if it is continuously decreasing for 10 uh, time, time in information, Time, time, 10 time intervals of one minute, so that means 10 minutes, uh, it produces an alert. 
So this is an example of that. And this should be configurable as well. So if you want to configure this, then we can go to the business rule manager so that you can basically fill a form and, and do these changes. So here what we have to do is first we have to fill, create this, and then we have to change the places that we want to fill, make it configurable. And then we have to deploy this configured, configurable template into the server so that you can basically go and do those changes. Like uh, I'll just show that UI as well. Uh, so if we are in the dashboard, uh, so there is a UI for business rules. Uh, so, um, so you can basically go and create a business rule. So you can have two options. You can create from scratch or you can create from a template. So the template ones are the developers who have already templated this, so you can go and modify that or from scratch. Uh, also, you can have certain use cases, like for example, uh, you can give some name, uh, and uh, you can pick an input, like these inputs can be uh, some business value, like, like I, the sales input or something like that, right? And, um, and it has some properties, and then you, you can, we can define a filter, like for a business user, this might be very useful, like you can say price greater than this value, and I want another thing. Uh, I, I'm just giving some random numbers here. Uh, so, so these kind of filters can be generated, and then you can say whether it's N, A, and P, or and then you can say or maybe O, and and we can even put brackets to define this condition, and then he can basically click say, add his email address. Uh, and basically do a mapping and send it out. So, so this is a, a form-based UI for business users, but this will only give you a, a very basic filtering kind of capability. So if you have a, a defined streams that they want to enable disable alerts for them and to, to do some level of that, we are trying to provide through this. And for the most complex scenarios, uh, we can, of course, uh, go to the business rules and go for the templated cases. Uh, and we can find a template and, and we can modify that. So in this case, uh, we have a template defined with the rule name and the time uh, period and uh, the, email, uh, the, the email address that the business user is going to use, and then we can save and deploy that. So this will basically deploy that on the server. So I'll, sh I'll, I'll, show an, I'll go and edit an already existing one. So you can see it's five, and example at email.com is what we are using. And if I go to the pack, uh, you will, I will be able to go to um, the worker, uh, and worker should have a deployment, and the CD files, and this is the file that was generated. So this has this example at email.com, and these values are being five. So this is because it is five because uh, we have configured it that way. And if the business user want, they can make it 55 and it's example one, and they can basically do a save and deploy. So this file is now automatically changed to 55, and it's uh, example one at uh, gmail.com. So this has been automatically changed, and we can create uh, such, such uh, uh, stuff through a JSON configuration. I'll just uh, uh, show you the configuration so that you can understand how it uh, works. Um, Resources, business rules, templates. Uh, so it, you can basically define it through a JSON uh, and have uh, this email is a conf configurable stuff. And I don't know whether you can see this. Uh, we can just have uh, di um, different configuration points uh, and give that information so that we can automatically uh, generate the questions that we are asking here. So the questions and the descriptions are automatically generated from that particular JSON file. So that's just to give you a high level idea. Uh, and apart from that, uh, the next thing is how you can basically deploy this. So the stream processor can be deployed as a um, HA node. So we can have two stream processors deployed uh, with, by connecting to a database for high availability. And uh, 
when the events are sending events, they will send events to both of them, and they will internally correlate and pub publish events. So that can, we have tested, and it can handle up to 100k events per second, and most of the use cases of, of our customers are handled through that. Uh, well, but when we take, uh, take other competitors, they, have, they need at least five plus nodes to do that. And at the same time, this also provides zero downtime, zero event losses, and uh, it's very simple to deploy because you just need an RDBMS and we don't need Zookeeper, Kafka, or any complex uh, deployment scenarios. So for a simple alerting kind of use case, this would work uh, the best. And we have also deployed this into a, in a US medical um, organization, so they want each and, event, each and every event to be delivered exactly once. So they are basically using this particular scenario. Uh, so we are using, um, we, they, we have deployed this in a multi-data center uh, such that they make sure the events are getting deployed. So the, when it comes to stream processing, multi-data center support is not provided by uh, um, almost all of the pro providers. So this is uh, one of the key capabilities that we have. But we, the one th thing that we were lacking on the previous products is the highly scalable uh, environment. So we, are, uh, we, we tried to do it on top of Storm. Uh, it was working, but not as efficient as we expected. So we had some issues when we tried to deploy it with several customers. So now we are rethinking the approach. And with the, with the evolution of Kafka, we are utilizing that uh, so that now we can do exactly once processing, fault tolerance, and highly scalable with no back pressure. A distributed deployment, and the way this distributed deployment uh, works, it can works on top of Yarn. Uh, currently, um, Kubernetes is on the way, uh, and uh, we can also do on the manual deployment. Like you can start up multiple worker nodes, and you, then you can start the manager node, which basically connects and do it. So you can, if you are not going to go with containers, we can still work without container mode as well. So we can have multiple uh, stream processors. So there will be some stream processors in the apps which work as the event consumers. They put them into the Kafka. And there will be other stream processors, like basically CD apps, that consume from this and put it back. But the, uh, so all of this, like where these apps are deployed and how they are deployed, you don't need to worry about that. The job manager, like when you deploy to the job manager, it will take care of putting the correct one on the correct places. But um, so now you might think, OK, I have to come up and write, think about all of this and write multiple small, small stuff. It is not necessary, because what we basically do is, uh, with the previous uh, knowledge that we have and the experience that we have, the same CD application, we can say, OK, this particular query, I want to run it on four nodes. And uh, this is the group, uh, group ID for that. And uh, for this particular partition, I want to run it on two nodes. So you can basically give the parallelism information in an annotation. And internally, the system will decompose this and run it. So if you can run and test this ap application on the editor on a single node mode, and then you can ex download that and put it on to the, um, uh, what do you call the uh, job manager, so that it will uh, uh, break them into pieces and deploy it on, on, on a distributed manner. So uh, this feature is also available on Alpha, but I'm not demonstrating right now. Uh, the final part is monitoring your applications. So we should be able to monitor on a very fine-grained manner. So we have uh, latency, throughput, and all sort of monitoring capabilities. So uh, we have a thing called a status dashboard. Uh, Uh, so uh, I'm not sure. OK, you can see it. Uh, so we have a thing called status dashboard, so which connect to the workers available. Uh, and they show their CPU usage, memory usage, load average, and this number of uh, app, uh, deployed CD apps, whether they are correct ones or they, they have issues. You can go into details and find some uh, system-specific information uh, where they are in installed and, and stuff. The last five minute uh, trends of their CPU levels, load average, and stuff. Uh, for each CD application, the uh, latency and the throughput levels of that. And if you want to see more information, like last one hour or, or, or kind of information, you can still go through that and, and, and see some uh, analysis on that. And then for, we can also drill down into each application level. So, okay, this, this is for this particular test CD app. 
This is the app that is deployed, and this for these streams that is there, the throughput level, uh, cu current count, mean uh, one minute rate, five minutes rate, 15 minutes rate. So it gives you a very good summary. Like for example, if you are building an application that has uh, some uh, constraints, like for example, you're accessing tables, or we are doing a very complex manipulation, and if, if it is a bottleneck, then you will be able to use this and basically understand how uh, everything worked together. Uh, so I think we are almost over time. Um, so I'll just wrap up that. So, uh, so with all of these capabilities, uh, these capabilities will be used for the, uh, uh, for the analytics products. Like for example, if we come to API Manager Analytics, uh, ESB analytics and identity analytics will be built on top of this, uh, and it will have all the similar fe features that you have, but you will be able to run that one with very lean products. Uh, and uh, we are also building other scenarios like fi fi finance and banking, retail, location, operational analytics, smart energy, social media analytics, uh, system and network monitoring, and healthcare. Uh, monitoring related uh, stuff with the domain experts from the customers. So we have also improved Siddhi. So we also provide support for as an embedding em, em, uh, library that you can embed inside your product. Siddhi can also be embed, which is the core of this. You can embed that in your products as well. So, uh, so it is lightweight and lean, and we, we can run Siddhi on Android. So like if you are doing an IoT project, so you can run Siddhi so that you can do all of these complex event processing on the edge nodes, and you can be intelligent and only send relevant information to the centralized information center. Otherwise, you have to send a lot of stuff. So we have out-of-the-box connectors to all the Android sensors. Like, for example, if you are using an Android phone as an edge device, uh, all the Android-related, um, you can send an SMS through that from Siddhi. You can send uh, uh, ring a phone uh, on the light, off the light, based on a condition, and you can get the temperature sensor. All of those have out-of-the-box support, so we have that. And we also have extended Siddhi to support Python. So if you are, if you are comfortable using Python, then you can, you can write these queries and integrate to other Python applications uh, and use that as well. So these are some capabilities that we are trying to provide to run uh, our complex event processing and the streaming application on your edge. So you can go to the release page, like it, if you go to GitHub, WSO2 and product SP, SP stands for stream processor. Releases, you will be able to get the latest release. Uh, you can try out these features. It has very nice, that editor will basically have a, a nice, uh, uh, um, uh, very easy to learn um, uh, demos and s like, for example, uh, uh, if you go to each of them, it gives you the prerequisites, what it, what it does, and those samples are very easy to learn, so you can go through each of those samples. Uh, and apart from that, so that's all that we have. Uh, if you need more information about Siddhi, feel free to go to the WSO2 uh, github.io slash Siddhi. So that will also help you to understand uh, the internal library of it and if, if you want to embed that or use it. So Uber was using it. Apache Eagle is embedding Siddhi inside the application uh, to do policy management and on all of those scenarios. So you can uh, get to know about the in detail documentation of the product. Uh, and uh, if you want to contribute, you can go through the architecture and we feel free to contribute uh, to this. And we also have a rich set of extensions. So all of these extensions are uh, supported, the IEO related extensions, mapper related extensions, tool related extensions. So all of these are supported and we are adding more and more features into this. So we, are an act we have an active community working on adding related features. So this is to give you an overall of uh, the community uh, uh, in involvement that we are getting in. Uh, and also um, the product that we are building out. So uh, thank you very much for attending this. And if you have any specific questions, you can uh, ask us and, and, and go and enjoy the afternoon party. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, any questions? <laughs> <laughs>